So here's another example of the hypothesis testing of a proportion and just one proportion and it's looking at the marijuana penalty. And this is from a number of years by so it's quite dated information but still it's a good example. So the government believes that no more than 25% of all college students would favor reducing penalties for the use of marijuana. A sample of 2,400 college students revealed that 750 favor reducing penalties. Now it doesn't formally say it's a hypothesis test question, but we're going to assume that we're going to say that, yeah, is this the case? We're trying to run a test, okay? So let's look at our summary information. So first off, the population value P is 25%, and that's what the government, Big Brother, believes, so no more than 25%. We took a sample of 2,400 colleges, so or students I should say, so that's 2,400, and 750 of those students favored reducing the penalties. So our sample proportion is 750 over 2,400. So again, notice how we don't have two percentages in our question, we have a percentage and we have a ratio. And that ratio came out to 31 to 5%. We have no alpha, we have no significance level given, we have no confidence level given, so we're going to use the sort of standard 5%. And here we have no level significance or no confidence level stated, so we're going to assume or we'll just use 5%. We can check our conditions and we're going to assume that 2400 college students is definitely less than 10% of all the college's students and we can check our NP and our NQ success and failure conditions and they both come out to greater than 10. So let's take a look at the hypotheses now. We have that the current proportion is 25% and we're actually saying that it's greater than. So we're trying to test if, if it's greater than 25%. Now, why would we pick a greater than test when nothing in our question is basically saying that? Well, we can look at our ratio and see that it is 31 to 5%, which is greater than 25. So that's why we would pick a greater than test. So here's our summary information again and our hypotheses. Let's put our hypotheses in terms of words. So the proportion of students who favor reducing the penalty is at most 25%. The proportion of students who favor reducing the penalty is more than 25%. Now even though here we have the at most, remember the null hypothesis, the common method now is to have that just the equal symbol in the null hypothesis. Let's take a look at our model. So we have a one tail greater than test, so we have our reject region to the right and our fail to reject region to the left. Now we do have a one tail test and our alpha is 05, so remember knowing that is going to let us look up our Z critical. So when we look up the Z critical, remember this is the area to the right, that's the alpha. So we'd be looking at 0.95 on our tables, our Z critical is 1645. So there's our alpha region shown, 5%. There's our Z critical, positive 1645. And there's our population proportion, 25%. Let's take a look now, moving on to our mechanics or calculation phase. So remember our Z calculated for our test statistic P hat, point of, in, point of interest minus center divided by spread. Plugging in the values, 31.25 was our sample proportion, 25 is our population proportion, and here's the spread of our model, and notice again the spread includes the population proportion. So don't make that common error that some students do, they put in the sample proportion down here. No, we have to have the population. And when we calculate this to two decimal places, we get 7.07. .07 and we can locate our Z calculated that's associated with our sample statistic and we can see that we're in the reject region because 707 is greater than 1645. Second part of our mechanics or calculation is to figure out the p-value and remember that for a right tail test the p-value is going to be the area to the right of our Z calculated. So we can look the area to the left of 707 and we get 0.9999. So our p-value, remember we need the area to the right, is 1 minus 0.9999 or triple not 1. Now we can move on to our decision phase. We've done the first part. Z calculated 707 is clearly in the reject region. 
The p-value comparison, our p-value triple not one is quite a bit smaller than our alpha value of 05. So again, we're rejecting H naught. And once more, notice that both of these have the same result. Putting our all our steps together and then coming up with our conclusion. At the 5% level of significance, there's enough or sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the percentage of college students who favor reducing penalties for use of marijuana is actually greater than 25%. Okay, so it was currently 25%. Our sample said it was, looks like it's 31, so it looks like it's higher. That's why we were testing it to be higher. We were able to figure out our Z calculated, compare it to our Z critical, figure out our p-value, and then come up with a decision and a conclusion. Thanks.